where I'm sitting, I can see four dead standing trees that are of mature size. And the bark is almost stripped gone from them. And that's it. Four of them. That ain't going to go very far. I'm hoping it'll last until my Social Security goes through, and then I can afford to buy firewood. Seems to go for between $175 and $250 for seasoned, dry, hardwood. Now, if I order hardwood and tell them to deliver it to me here in the woods, I'm going to blow the damn mine. Sounds like fun. Maybe I'll bring you along for it when they show up to deliver. <laughs> See what the reaction is to delivering firewood to the woods where they cut the wood down in the first place. So, my health is improving. I mentioned this the other day in the video about my diabetes. Now if I can just get this foot to stop hurting, if I can get back to walking around a little better, it's one of the reasons I, through the entire month of November, I made very few videos unless I was just sitting down in my truck. Every video I made in the month of November was sitting down and taking high dose painkillers for my foot. That's terrible. I had hoped that by the 1st of December I would have an income so I could finish building my shack, my wall tank. Oh, I had another development. A friend of mine, and I'm going to call him a friend, name's Ed, he's a nurse. Seems he has some tools I'm going to need, and he's told me he's willing to loan them to me. He's not going to bring them up here to me, he's going to let me come to his place and get them, I guess. Uh, or come to his work and get them. A generator and a circular saw to run on. When I manage to get plywood or particle board, chipboard, I'm going to need a way to cut it to shape. My sidewalls, I need pieces that are 75 inches tall by the 4 foot wide. I need uh, four of those. I'm going to need four pieces that are 75 tall by just under 2 foot wide. I haven't measured that part out yet. On each end, I'm going to need uh, three, three pieces on one end, four pieces on the other. The end with three pieces is going to uh, be uh, four foot wide, four foot wide, and four foot wide. And the two outside pieces need to have a single bevel, and the center piece needs to have a double bevel to match the V shape of my shaft. On this end, it's going to be four pieces, two on the sides with the bevel on just one, one, one angle on the top. And the center pieces, there's going to be two center pieces. One's going to be the door, which is going to be a rectangle. It's going to be just under six foot tall by whatever the width. And then I'm going to need a, a top piece to go above it which is going to be the four feet by foot and a half with a double bevel. I'm also going to need to buy some uh, liquid nails because it is my plan where the pieces of plywood butt together, a butt joint, or the tip board butts together with a butt joint. I'm going to have a strip so wide to go over the joint and I'm going to dope it with the liquid nails and thus sealing the vertical joint between each sheet of wood. Now, you're going to say, Emberato, how are you going to plug up the hole between the top of the plywood and the rafters and the roof tarp? I have been saving plastic grocery bags. 
I have been raking up dry leaves and putting them in garbage bags and storing them. And when it comes time, I'm going to take them plastic grocery bags, I'm going to stuff some leaves in it, roll them up to create a roll, a snake, and stuff that in between the rafter beams and the tarp. And I'm going to take another one and stuff it between the rafter beams and the top of the plywood. And this should effectively seal that joint between the plywood and the uh, tarp. And then, of course, I'll use some duct tape to hold it in place. I'm not trying to get it where I can get it 90 to 100 degrees inside. I'm just trying to get it where I can get it above 60, 65 degrees inside. When it's going to be, well, let's put it this way. In this area, January and February, it's not unheard of to see sub-zero temperatures. Okay, that is a tractor-propellered aircraft I'm hearing. No, I take that back. That's a helo coming in this direction. That's an egg beater. It was too far away from me here at first. Well, that's the video for today, boys and girls. This is how you treat rainwater caught under a tree canopy where squirrels may have been pooping on the limb and there's the potential of crypto or guardian. Uh, it's one of the uh, freight jets going across there. Also, I will share with you I didn't get a chance to shoot the video because the phone was on charge in the truck and I was 15, 20 feet away. I had a visitor to my camp the other day that I couldn't get to shoot the video of. The minute I moved, it flew away. I had The visitor I had was a full-grown adult bald eagle. Landed on a limb right over there. The tree is probably um, 70 feet from me. The minute I moved, it scared the bird away. Flew away. Right now I got another visitor to my camp, another bird. One of the little black and white woodpeckers. There are two species. I don't know the proper name of this one. It is not the pileated. Pileated is the red-headed woodpecker. This is the little one with the black head. Oh, I've got a motorcycle coming in. I'm going to turn you folks off because this may be my friend that gave me the 60 bucks and he may wish to remain anonymous. By the way, don't forget to